Hey everyone, Colbert here with another Racial Lens video. Guys, before we get to the patch and how it affects the game so far, um, go quickly to my previous video. It's a gem giveaway. It's four lucky winners, five if we get to 4.5k subscribers. So go check it out, comment there, and also subscribe uh, in order to uh, be eligible to win. Patch has been applied today. There were a lot of restarts for the servers today. The whole day was just a constant mess by the developers of the game. They're just um, doing restarts after restarts. Everyone is reporting bugs so far, and I think the most important one is the campaign bug. That um, if you've got the the raid the raid card, you don't get 20% XP. You, I think you get 10% XP instead of 20% XP. So there is a bug there, and we're gonna have another maintenance in four minutes 58 seconds. It seems. So uh, hopefully we'll get through the video uh, during that time. So quickly the battle pass. Uh, this is how it's gonna work i don't know why the champions are not shown here but um the battle pass is just gonna be 100 levels from what i've seen there's gonna be lots of rewards i haven't written down the rewards the rewards do seem to be worth it if you're into uh spending to get the gold pass but i'm not sure if you're able to get the legendary champion without getting the extreme gold pass or the gold pass plus 25 or whatever so look at this guys there's a gold gold pass that's $27.99 for me, it's $25 for you guys in the US, $25 uh, USD. And it's gonna be $40 USD for you guys and $40 USD, $43.99 for me. You're gonna get 25 levels for free without actually having to do the quest. So you're gonna get quickly all these rewards. These are not gonna be added to the rewards already. So these are actually um, the ones that you would get if you went 25 levels up. You can get these if you want to spend that extra bit of money. If you don't, you can uh, use just the gold pass. If you get the gold pass, I think you'll be able to get all the rewards. From what Srila said and in mod chats, she said that you can actually get all the rewards here with without actually having to buy uh, the whole thing. So through the daily challenges, if you do them every single day, you'll be able to get the top reward which at uh, level 100 is gonna be one legendary tome. So overall, I think it's it, I think it's a cool way to do add more challenges to the players. If you eat 50 magic champions, for example, today, play more playtime reward. I think this is gonna be a fail for me because I won't be able to do it. Uh, I think because yeah, I've already claimed some of the playtime rewards. This is this is a very bad challenge because I already claimed like five of them, and this one in the last minutes, and then we have another one here. So I don't know what they were thinking with that. Um, they should have changed it. And you get like five points here. You need 20 to get one level. I think it's gonna be the same thing overall. Weekly challenges is gonna be the same thing. You're gonna get flat rewards here for doing all uh, five, is it five? Yeah, all five of these challenges. These are not gonna go away every single week. So you're gonna be able to do them even if you miss them. So these are gonna unlock throughout until the end of the eight weeks. So it's eight weeks for all these rewards. I think it's worth it overall. If you actually buy, you're gonna get the top and bottom rewards as well. Let's look at the champions that you actually unlock. So this guy, Whirlim, Frost King. First of all, he looks really cool. He looks like Tormin's uh, stronger brother. <laughs> Not because Tormin is a dwarf or, or whatever, but yeah, he looks really cool. Uh, I always give praise to the designer. So his A1 attacks one enemy, 30% chance of placing a freeze debuff for one turn. Perfect Veil buff on the ally with the lowest HP for one turn if the freeze debuff is placed. Damage is based on defense, that is great. It's a great A1. Um, okay, you're gonna get War Master on him if you wanna use him for the clan boss. His A2 is an AoE, 30% chance of placing 30% uh, decreased critical damage debuff for two turns. Place the 30% increased critical damage buff on all allies for two turns. This is also good for Arena. You might be able to use it also for the clan boss depending on your team. Uh, critical damage team maybe we get those in the future instead of all poison teams but it doesn't seem the case and then his a3 places a 25% strength and buff and a 60% increased de defense buff on all allies for two turns always good it's gonna make your your team so much more tankier at four turns cooldown with two books uh yeah that's gonna be good but he needs six books here and another four books here so overall a lot of investment for a void legendary i would expect him to be much stronger i think um, okay, he's increased allied defense in arena. So he's gonna be mostly um, a legendary for the use in arena. But overall, I mean, it's a free legendary, not free. It's a legendary for $25. It's good. I, I mean, you can use him in faction wars. Worst case scenario. Uh, there's other rewards as well, like legendary sets, uh, chickens, runes, actually this one, the haste glyph, that's nice. Uh, 
I don't know about these. Uh, rewards from Battle Pass level, Battle Pass Raid Boost. You're going to get additional XP uh, through the campaign when, when having the Raid Boost. So that's kind of cool, to be honest. Because um, there's other champions as well. We're going to get go through them. But, but look at this. Uh, I was talking about the XP. You're going to get additionally 10%, another 10, another 10, another 20%. So overall, plus 50% XP and silver from all battles. I really like this one. Uh, if you're going to get the gold pass, you're going to get all these rewards. It's going to get give you another 50% XP, make your uh, leveling up so much more faster. It's going to work in campaigns, it's going to work in dungeons. So I like that, that part. But the thing is, it's not going to apply for the whole uh, period of the battle pass. The thing is, you're going to unlock the first one in day one, okay? And then you'll need another, I don't know how many days. How many days is it? Need another, I don't know, 10 days to get another 10% XP. And the other one is going to take you another 40 level, 30 levels to get another 10% and so on and so on. I mean, it's going to take you time. And so you won't have the full benefit from the beginning. But the rewards overall for the amount of money uh, required are good. I mean, um, you get five champions, I think. Six champions, you get two epics, you get the bears. Let me see how to open it. You get Ursa and Ironhide, you get the Black Bear. Attacks one enemy, increase cooldown, the target skills by one turn. Attacks one enemy twice, each hits 75%, decreasing the turn meter by 5%. Decrease attack, debuff, that's great. Attacks all enemies, again, decrease attack, debuff for two turns. Uh, this one is good for the dungeons as well. Ascension, each hit has a 50% chance of decreasing the target turn meter by 7.5%. Each hit also has a 50% chance of putting one of the target skills on cooldown if the target is under a decreased critical rate debuff. Does he apply decreased critical rate debuff? No, so you're gonna need another ally with him in order to benefit from his passive. And the other one, the other bear, let me go. So Stagnite, uh, he's gonna be a banner lord, support champion. Bot query, tax one enemy twice, each hit 30% chance of placing a 30% decreased speed debuff for two turns. That's okay. That's okay, and attacks all enemies, 70% chance, 60% uh, decrease defense, decrease attack, great for the dungeons, 3 turns cooldown with the books, overall very good support, and his passive, 50% increase accuracy buff on an ally for 1 turn each time the ally has a debuff resisted by an enemy, oh that's great. This is a great passive. I think this is a really good support champion. Take into the dungeons. If you get resisted, he's going to place the increased accuracy. It's a passive, so he's going to do that every single time for all your allies. Overall, very good. His stats, I don't know his stats. I need to check him out through the index. But his HP seems to be quite high enough. Uh, his damage is based on attack. So, yeah, you're going to build some attack on him if you want to make him stronger. Yeah, Grave Chill Killer. It's a rare attack champion under the hordes. Attacks one enemy, has a 40% chance of placing a 5% poison debuff for one turn. And Blood Chill has a 75% chance of placing a 30% decrease debuff for two turns. And decrease debuff instead if the target is under a poison debuff. Yeah, if you take her with a poisoner, she's gonna do different stuff. And Icy Veins. Attacks one enemy twice, 5% poison if poison sensitivity debuff. That is great. Poison sensitivity is like 25% or 50% more damage from your poisons on an enemy. So if you got a team that can use a poison sensitivity champion, then that's great. I think there's only one of them so far in the game. I think it's the rare that we get from level 1 of the gold pass. Ursine Ice Crusher. There we go. Look at this bear. It reminds me of Volley Bear from League of Legends. So A1 attacks one enemy. 10% chance of placing a block cooldown skills debuff for one turn. Yeah, that's awesome for arena. Attacks all enemies. 75% chance of placing a 30% critical rate uh, debuff for two turns. Yeah, he's going to go with the other bear. They're going to go together and they're going to help each other out, I'm guessing. Decrease the damage all allies receive from critical hits by 15%. Builds this champion turn meter by 5% whenever an enemy lands a normal, strong, or weak hit. Huh, that's cool. So 5% turn meter whenever an enemy lands, basically any hit, normal, strong, uh, weak hit, anything that the enemy lands, he's going to make it much, much better. He's a good one as well. He's a good epic as well. So overall, the value um, just from the epic champions is really good. The legendary is not that great compared to the, to the epics. I mean, Frozen Banshee, is she the one with the poison sensitivity? Yeah, 
Uh, attacks one enemy twice. Each hit has an 80% chance of placing a 5% poison if the target is under poison sensitivity debuff. Attacks one enemy. Builds the terminators of all allies by 2% for each debuff on the target. I guess if you have if you've got 10 uh, debuffs on the target, she's gonna get 20% terminator boost. That's not always great for the clan boss because uh, it's gonna mess up your turn order for a counterattack setup. So might be good in another kind of setup and a speed setup. Of course, she's gonna be great. But she's a rare uh, attack based champion. Her defense is going to be very low. She's going to be dying so quickly. Attacks one enemy has a 10% chance of placing a 25% poison sensitivity debuff. There we go. We, we've got it. It's the weaker version. It's not a 50% version. The chance increases by 10% for each debuff on the target. So you're going to put at least three books on it. Let's say you put five books on it. It's going to be two, three turns cooldown. Very nice. You're going to have that. Uh, 30% chance to apply and another, I don't know, if you've got 7 debuffs on the target, you're going to get another 70% chance to apply it. So you're basically going to apply it every single time. Put the accuracy masteries on her and hopefully get landed for 3 turns. It's going to be great. Another 25% poison damage. Yeah, it's going to be great for beginners, I think, in the game. But she's not going to be replacing any champions, any other champions in the game. Currently using for a counterattack uh, setup. I'm thinking about actually getting the gold pass. Not sure yet. Um, what are these rewards? Oh, the battle pass reward. I'm going to leave it there. 99 days. That's awesome. 99 days. You can just put it there. Anyway, guys, um, this was my first view of the patch. There's a lot of bugs still. I think they should have fixed these before they released the patch. But I think everyone was really angry with Plarium already because of how they treated the whole Dracula thing. So they rushed to release a patch in order to make people quiet. Yeah, this is the patch we got. There's no new content, basically. The faction wars are not going to be released. The dwarf faction wars are the ones that I was really excited about because I've got strong dwarves. <laughs> Whatever, guys. Uh, remember, I've got a gem giveaway. Previous video, comment, subscribe. That's it. Thank you, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.